What's up everyone, my name is Karma and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the new RX Vega prototype benchmark leak from the 3D Mark TimeSpy database. And it's this one right here, but obviously, you know, people were pretty disappointed in it and we don't know any and all the full details. Um, but there was something interesting that came out of this, which was the 700 megahertz memory bus clock, which is something that no one is talking about, but I think is super important. And the reason why is because previous to this, uh, the memory clock of Vega was only estimated to be around 400 megahertz, which going from seven, from 400 sorry to 700 is a huge boost. Now, of course, the memory bandwidth here was already pretty ludicrous. I mean, when you compare this to something like the 1080 Ti, which has a pretty large memory bandwidth of 484, 409, obviously disappointing, but, um, you know, it's still sort of in the same ballpark. Uh, it's obviously better than the GTX 1080, and, you know, that's kind of important in the long run in terms of 4K. Uh, but yeah, this 700 megahertz uh, memory bus clock is potentially something really important. Now, of course, we don't know if this reading is correct, but I would assume based off, you know, how it can read 1060s uh, correctly and RX 480s memory bus clocks correctly, that we would be able to see this potentially being correct. Now, like I said, take this with a grain of salt, but this is pretty important, and I'll outline to you why. Here is SK Hynix's GDDR6, which might potentially be on NVIDIA Volta in early 2018. And potentially, if you put this under a 384-bit memory bus, you could have a memory bandwidth of up to 768 gigabytes per second, which is pretty insane. Uh, that's the fastest memory bandwidth speed that we would have seen so far out of graphics cards. Um, but, you know, Vega might potentially have something very close to that almost six months earlier. And I'll outline why. So if we do a calculation uh, on a 2048-bit memory bus and we divide it by 8 from uh, bits to bytes, we get 716 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth, which totally blows this 409.6 out of the water. I mean, you're going from uh, 409.600 over 76800 times 100, you're getting an increase of essentially 47%, which is crazy. So, yeah, this is important. Um, but on top of that, if you would overclock to 750 megahertz, if HBM2 can overclock to that, then you're looking at 768 gigabits or gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth almost six months earlier than any NVIDIA flagship with GDDR6 could put out. Now, of course, Volta was said on the roadmap to have stacked DRAM. I don't know if uh, GDDR6 will be um, stacked DRAM. I'm, I'm not entirely sure on that. But essentially, you would get all the benefits of HBM2 out of Vega and potentially increased memory bandwidth um, compared to any other graphics card that we've seen. And it might even be, if you can overclock, potentially the same as a flagship NVIDIA Volta card a whole maybe year or six months earlier, which is pretty insane. Now, of course, uh, HBM3 won't come to around about 2019, 2020, and it'll, of course, have all these benefits such as, you know, higher peak bandwidth, they reckon higher than two times, uh, they reckon that you'll be able to stack higher than potentially six, um, oh, 16, sorry, and, you know, density they reckon will be over 16 gigabytes. Um, but yeah, so essentially HBM2, you know, we've been waiting for, for a while. Uh, here it says 500 megahertz max core frequency, which is pretty interesting. 
um, but if they found a way to get higher max core frequencies out of it, I'm pretty impressed. Um, or this could just be bullshit, so, you know, take it for what it is. But I think that's pretty important, and no one's talking about it. I don't see it anywhere on this article. If I type in 700 megahertz, nothing comes up. You can see they just show this stupid 1700x when it clearly says 1800x. Uh, thanks, Usman.